Southern Melly Giants footy time. And, uh, well, as we've been doing right through the year, we heard from Zali, and now we get to hear from Coleman. Coleman Shack joins us. Uh, g'day, Coleman. How are you going? Good afternoon, slow man. Good to join you for the last time of the year. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I know you're flat out busy. Have you had that sprayer out a few more times? Because when I was there last week, there's a lot of rust around the place. And have you been affected? Yeah, we sure have. There's not too many crops that uh, haven't been affected by a bit of disease this year, which is it's a good problem. It means there's plenty of moisture around, which is what we like to see. But, uh, yeah, it creates a bit more work um, on the other side of the coin. It has uh, been a lot of busyness for you blokes, and probably the uh, good thing for you is you haven't been playing football to keep up with the spraying, which you wouldn't have expected to be doing around the grand final time. But I bet you would have loved to have been part of it. And I know that um, the uh, votes from last week's B&F across the league, the Tui medal, I did say last week I thought you'd poll well even from the nine games you did play out of the 18. And uh, you did, actually, in the end, because you got 11 and to be the Southern Mallee Giants' uh, highest vote-getter, Coleman. Yeah, somehow snagged a few votes there. I, yeah, I think being the captain and, and tossing the coin gets your face shown to the umpires early might have, uh, might have helped with a few votes, I think. But, um, yeah, no, it's always, uh, like we talked about last week, a bit of a midfielder's award and a couple of the... Sent half back, Sammy White, a um, bit stiff in some games. So, yeah, yeah. how it went. Uh, yes, I think uh, fair to say. The umpires, uh, I, I think centre half backs quite often are um, overlooked uh, by votes. And I don't know why that is, but it's generally the centre half back that I notice a lot because I'm lock- looking at who locks down the key uh, forward from the other side and who punches the ball away to the boundary line, who does the little things to get back into the hole in front of two other uh, rampaging forwards coming out. It's usually the good centre half back, and I think Sammy fits that bill very, very well. And fitting the bill, um, uh, as we talk about the, the medal count for the club this week, uh, it's a big show, isn't it? Yeah, it will be Sunday uh, at the Hopes and Footy Shed. So it'd be good to see everyone get down there and yeah, sort of finish off the season, I suppose, and, and celebrate the, the A grade netball, making it all the way to the to the prelim final. Um, so it'd be good to get around them and. Um, yeah, that that definitely rewards players that have um, yeah played their role or not well as well noticed by the umpires or or onlookers as such. But yeah, the, the players that do a good job for the team, which might be a centre half back or or your uh, your wingman type players that yeah start getting as a lot of the ball as the midfielders. It's going to be interesting too because uh, in that context uh, you've polled really well at the um, Tui, but. You have to say, Sammy, I think would get the BNF, but Luke Marnie won't be far off. Um, who others uh, do you think could be right up there in the count? Yeah, Sam, especially early, he'll he'll be up there. He'll be off the flying start. Luke Marnie, um, he was terrific through the, the middle patch of the year. He there was yeah, I, maybe a month of footy there. He was best on every week, so he'll definitely be up there. Um, Zachy Robbins, he was uh, very consistent in the back line for us, uh, playing full back and and. Uh, half back flank, so he'll he'll pull up there, and um, yeah, Josh Webster was another consistent player all year for us. So, the end of those four, I'll uh, tip. No, I'll go to Luke Marnie. I'll tip. All right, I go for the big man at centre back. I'm hoping uh, somebody who got the card to put the votes in has uh, recognised some of these backmen. Uh, they never give it to full forward, so Nick Denham didn't play enough games anyway. But uh, he, that, that's just out completely these days. So we'll go that way. What about in the twos? Uh, I mean, uh, I know that uh, the coach has put his hand up and uh, said that he'd like the award, but I, I don't think he'll poll very well. Nah, unless he's got a vote card, that might be the reason he does. I'm not too sure, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it'll be yeah. Bodie Colbert obviously he played a few senior games, but when he was in the um, reserves, he was fantastic in the midfield. Damo Carra, he'll poll um, pretty well. Becky Brown, he strung a few games in the reserves there um, in the second half of the year, so he'll um, he'll poll there there as well. So. Uh, yeah, tough one to pick in the reserves. My 14-year-old boys had an absolute beauty of a season. They got on the score sheet in a lot of games, and uh, it was great to see uh, and uh, won some games through the year, which I think was even uh, better, uh, Coleman. It was a really exciting thing to see them uh, do that. Uh, how do you reckon the polling will go with these lads? It was an exciting year just to see them be competitive in majority of the games and then even win their handful of games. So, um it will be um, a very tight one, I'm predicting. Top sort of six players. There'll be Maxie Roberts off the half-back line. He improved out of sight. He'll, um, he was in the best a lot and, 
and really improve throughout the season. Ollie Wood, um, he played centre half back, so it was obviously down there a fair bit, and um, yeah, he held held the um, back line up, um, especially in the in the tight tight games and the ones that the, the boys won. So um, the Aiden Credlin in the midfield, he'll definitely poll well. Jacko Moore will poll poll some votes as well, and, and then the um, big um, the big fellas. Um, who Jesus uh, got his Kobe Bellinger and Kobe Hallam, I reckon. Kobe Hallam and, and Cody Frankel, they're the ones I was thinking yep. of. Yeah, yep. yeah. So they they were obviously in the in the playing ruck in midfield all year, and, and um, yeah, they, they were terrific. So oh. yeah, throwing a handful of names there. I'll go Kobe Hallam. I will. All right, he's done it. He's given it to us. Uh, lovely uh, to have that. Now let's have a look at uh, the preliminary final from last week in the seniors match. And uh, Ararat get another dip here. Uh, um, I should say um, that because of their uh, very very hard football they come away with 12 14 86 to 7 11 53 uh, you you actually called it last week that you thought it'd go that way i sort of said stall in an upset uh, stall were looking all right three quarter time but gee ararat came home and it was a game of uh, i guess quarters in a way it was there was a bit of a scoring and it was only a two or three goal breeze but it tended yeah it sort of acted like a five or six goal breeze um and yeah, Ararat, they outplayed them, yeah, definitely all in the first half. And they just probably didn't put it on the scoreboard um, to what the game reflected, how dominant they were in general play. Um, it all just hung in there to their credit, kept fighting, and kept getting timely goals that kept them in the game. And then come the third quarter, Stall got it together and, and got within three points of Ararat, I think, and, and put a lot of pressure on them. And it was anyone's game at three-quarter time. But yeah, Ararat, yeah, with their experience and, and their run and fitness, and, yeah, showed why they were probably the best uh, most consistent team throughout the year and, and run away in the fourth quarter. Yeah. As Scotty Stewart said earlier on, congratulations to uh, Kieran Adela Hunky. He's uh, back-to-back medals from Minute Matoa. And he stands tall, in my opinion, uh, with this game against Ararat. Uh, it's a beauty of a matchup. The run of the Rats, but a little bit of moisture about the place and uh, the hard under football uh, Minute Matoa might like that. They will, I reckon, yeah. Yeah, well done to Kieran. Um, he's had a terrific year and he's, yeah, one of the toughest players to match up on and he'll have a huge factor in the grand final, I'm sure. He'll, um, obviously, a tall man, plays ruck and full forward, but, um, yeah, he's, he's sort of like an on-baller, so the wet weather won't worry him too much. Um, but, yeah, I think Minya probably a bit more of a stronger, contested type, type team uh, compared to Ararat. Um, they're running and, um, yeah, moving the ball very quickly, so... The wet, if it does come in, wet, um, it'll definitely suit Minyup, I think. And not, yeah, even if it's dry, I'm still leaning towards Minyup. They've just timed their run really well this year, and the back sort of couple of months of the year that they've looked, yeah, very hard to beat. I don't know if they've lost a the game, to be honest. Um, so they'll be uh, tough to beat, led well by Tim McKenzie. So my tip with uh, the Burrows. Yeah, and the thing about them too is their last quarter in the second semi, they actually um, kicked seven goals one to two goals two in that quarter against Ararat. Ararat at three quarter time with three points down. What can Ararat do? Was that was that fitness in the last quarter, or was that the Luke Fisher factor, or uh, the Will Holmes, uh, the, the you know the Nick Kelsons, the Corey Morgans? Was that those those really seasoned fit players for Minute Matoa able to to uh, really put pressure on when? Uh, Ararat maybe were starting to uh, get fatigue. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think it'd be the fitness. I'm not going to put it down to that because Ararat have been a very fit team all year and they play with a lot of run. And, and yeah, when we played them the last time we played them in the year, they um, we were nothing in that three quarter time as well. I don't think, and they um, jumped away in the last quarter um, on us. So I think it was more to do with Minutes' uh, experience coming out when the when the game got tight and, and tough and. Um, Ararat will definitely learn from that, no doubt, and, and uh, won't want it to happen again. But I just think, yeah, across the board, across the ground, yeah, too many players that have been there before and, and still hungry for some success. So I think that's why they'll uh, get the job done. Tommy Mills played a lot in the last game up uh, ground and uh, he needs to kick goals for them uh, if I think they're to win. They didn't have that big multiple goal scorer in the last game. Uh, Holmes and Johns were good scorers for Minute Matoa. Cox, um, Robinson, Veering all scored uh, multiple but uh, need to get something, I think, from Mills to um, be able to see them win the match. I've gone for Minya Matoa. A quick tip across the day. The reserve grade, of course, um, is going to be a terrific day of football. Minya Matoa meet Horsham Dees.
yet. Um, it would be hard to tip against the Burrows, who have been the best reserves team all year. Um, but in saying that, I know the Demons have um, definitely got a few, uh, obviously with their seniors not playing in the grand final, uh, they've got a few senior players that didn't, didn't break or bust the um, game limit. So they'll be heavily bolstered in the reserves um, by those players. It could be a handful of them, I think, drop back to the reserves. So... I'll uh, go to the Demons in an upset there. All right, I'm going to join you in that too. The 17s is going to be a beauty between the Ds and Ararat. It's going to be the absolute running machine of the Horsham Ds. But Ararat, uh, they have got some quality kids in this outfit and um, the, they certainly have shown a lot. When they played uh, back uh, in the uh, semi-final knockout, they beat Minya Matoa by 20-plus goals. Of course, the Ds uh, beat the Saints. Then last week, out come Ararat and beat the Horsham Saints by a couple of points and four in the end so look the rats i think have had a lot of games i just feel maybe the rest is actually going to help the d's uh, yes oh maybe i'm not too sure i'll um i i'll be honest here i don't have too much uh, intel on the players in the in the 14s of these two teams um obviously they um yeah they do very well against our our boys and, and have to help our fellas out um with with so many 14-year-olds across the board. So it'll be actually interesting to watch this one. Two young teams go at it. and I'll, uh, I'll tip the Ds, though. All right. It's a big day of football, and it's down at the Horsham City Oval, and it'll be a big weekend on Sunday when the best and fairest count is up at Hopeton for the Southern Mallee Giants. And, uh, Coleman, it's been fantastic to have you on board this year. I really enjoy talking to you and off-air, too, of course, uh, building a, a friendship of hearing about what's happening on the farm and, and so on and with your life and a little baby and everything that's happened. So uh, really, really great to have you on board this year. Now it's been a very enjoyable year and yeah, love your work and all that you put in for the uh the country football fly man. So good stuff. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Coleman Shack talking Southern Mallee Giants footy.